Hey guys, this is Whale Hater doing Pack Tracer. Well, it's not really a number, but it is kind of a cool practice skill assessment for the EIGRP. This is at the end of, of the CCNA3 course, and we're doing our best to get through this monster of a Pack Tracer. Now, if you were curious about what all that said, go ahead and read it. We're just going to jump down here to the bottom so we can get started, though. Configure default routes. Configure IPv4 and IPv6 default static routes on data center. Ta-da. We also want to send those default routes to the hospital cloud over there. Use the outgoing interface value for your configuration. On this one, it's going to be serial 010. Configure the clinic 10 router with an IPv4 default route to the hospital cloud, so same cloud using the outgoing interface value. Let's go ahead and do that here. We'll do the second one first since we have a lot more to do on the data center router later. IP route, just going to give our quad zeros and then the exit interface for this guy is, what is it? S triple zero. So there's your default route there. And I think that's all we got to do for now. So let's go over to the data center now. We have to use console cables on all this stuff, so it's a little bit of a hassle, but not too bad. All right, so we're going to do a default route out of that S010 interface, right? Yep, 010. IP route, this is the IPv4 route. Again, we're just going to use that quad zero command. S010. Enter. Now, the very first thing I do before I do anything with IPv6 is I always turn on IPv6 routing. So let's give that unicast routing command. All right, now let's do the IPv6 route, and that's just the double colon slash zero, but you probably remember that just fine. Enter. Okay, so that is that. Now let's move down. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Step one, one is done. Let's go to step one, two. Configure EIGRP for IPv4 on the data center, hospital one, and hospital two routers. That's all these guys oop, in that big blue circle. One, two, three. All right, so we're going to use the autonomous system number of 99 for all EIGRP routers. Then let's see, the second thing we do is activate routing for the appropriate networks. I'll show you how to do that. Use the inverse masks, so that's that wildcard mask, that specify only addresses within the networks. Use the router IDs as followed. Data center is triple ones or quad ones, hospitals all twos, and the hospital two is all threes. And that takes care of that. All right, let's get going. So firstly, we say router for the IPv4 version, because you can see down here there's an IPv6. So we'll just go router, EIGRP 99. That's that autonomous system number, enter. Oops, wrong command. I'm doing OSPF in my mind. Router ID, EIGRP router ID, and that's all ones for the data center router. Enter. All right, so the networks that we have to do are these up here. The 192s here, here, and here on this interface right there. Okay, so let's pull up our handy dandy sheet and put in our first address. And that was 192.168.109. Okay, we got our slash notation already there, so 30. So the network address is going to be 192.168.108. And with a slash 30, the wildcard mask is going to be 0003. Now again, if you guys want this table, go ahead and just give me a, a holla over at whalehater at gmail.com and I'll send you a, a, not a link, but I'll send you the, the file in an email. Okay, so right here, network 
192.168.100.8. We're going off the network address. And then trip, triple zero three. Enter. Network. What's our next one? The next one is 192.168.121. So just change that to 21. Looks like our network ID is 20. So what we can do is just hit the up arrow and then arrow over and 20. Enter. Again, let's do our. Well, let's see, what's the next one here? Two zero zero three. Okay, let's see where we're going with this. Two zero zero three zero one one three eighteen. And again, that's a slash thirty. Looks like two zero three zero one one three eighteen is a sixteen. So we can up arrow. Oops, wrong side. Up arrow. Go over, get rid of most of the everything here. 203.0.113.16. Enter. So that's that. Yeah, that's that. Bring that down. Okay. We've got the network commands put in. Now just since we're inside the routing configuration right now, let's give it one more command. And that's going to be the redistribute static addresses. Because you remember, we did these two static addresses up here. So we're going to have to do that redistribute static. Okay? Enter. Now it'll tell you to do that way far down this packet tracer, but let's just take care of it now so we don't have to do it later. All right, so next, let's go to the hospital. Hospital router there, hospital one. Router EIGRP 99. EIGRP router ID, that's gonna be all twos again. Oh, let's do our network commands. What do we got for networks here? Hospital 1 has a, looks like it's on that 8 network again. Then we've got a 33, and then a 10, 10, 0, 0, or 0, 3, slash 24. So let's bring up our sheet again. Hospital 192.168.100.10. So again, it's going to be on that 8 network. Let's give our triple zero three. This is still a slash 30. And you'll see right away we got a, a network adjacency. So that's wonderful. Next, it's on, the, yeah, on that slash 33. Or I'm sorry, not dot thirty three slash thirty is what I meant. Network, and we're going to change this to it looks like a thirty two right there. Enter. And then lastly, looks like we got a ten ten or ten one zero three. And that's a slash twenty four. We've got wildcard mask of 255s and the network address is 10100. Enter. Okay, bring that down. I think we got those all figured out there. Let's bring this, we can just go back here, and then we're going to do the last one on the hospital too. Come on, there we go.
router EIGRP 99, EIGRP router ID, all threes. Network, what are the networks for these guys? Hospital 2. All right, we've got the 192.168.100, and I think that's going to be on that 32 network again, since it's a slash 30. There's only two possible addresses on that. There's that one. Looks like we got the neighbor adjacency, so we must have been right. That 22 is going to be again on that other router, so that's going to be the 20 network again. Got okay, we're not another adjacency. We're doing fine. Alright, now let's do our serial interfaces. So that's that's the or not serial. We did, blah, 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 we did the serial interfaces. We have to do the gigabit inter, Ethernet interfaces, and these are sub interfaces, so we gotta make sure we get those dots in there. When we're configuring them later. So network that is on the 10.10.0.1, but that's that's just the interface address. So it's going to be a 00, 0 again. And the wildcard mask is 255. Enter. The next one, the only difference is that second octet. It's going to be 10.15.01, that same thing, slash 24. So over here, let's just put up arrow and make this a 5. Enter. The last one, same thing, let's just do a 20. Enter. Okay, we're done. We are done, done with at least the IPv4 per portion of this. Now we have to configure it for the IPv6 portion. So let's go up to data center again. We're just going to do it the same pattern each time so we don't forget stuff. IPv6. Now we this is on the data center. We've already done the unicast routing, but just make sure anytime you do IPv6, always make sure you put that unicast routing first. I'm going off some notes here, so bear with me. IPv6 router EIGRP 99. Now, from before, we also put in some static routes. So let's do that static, or excuse me, redistribute static, enter. And we have to give this command, no shutdown, enter. Now we can get out of here because IPv6, you configure that on the interfaces themselves. So that's interface. Me the three interfaces S triple zero, S double one, and S one zero one zero. Right. Interface S triple zero, IPv six, EIGRP ninety nine. Enter one two. Change that to a one. And then one slash zero. Okay, I think we're done here. Let's go to Hospital 1. Exit out of that one. IPv6 unicast routing, remember that? IPv6 router EIGRP 99. Let's see here. We need EIGRP router ID of all twos. And then we'll do the read. No, we don't need to do a read to do static. We don't have any static addresses on here, so we can get out of here. Oh, 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 no shutdown. I almost did that. Ha, ha, ha. Caught myself. Aren't you glad? Let's get out of there. Interface. S triple zero. So we've got S triple zero, S double zero one, and G zero zero. So those are the three interfaces we have to include. IPv6, come on baby, IPv6, 
EIGRP 99. Got a neighbor adjacency. Awesome. All right, we're good to go there. Let's go over to <clears throat> over to hospital two. IPv6, unicast routing, IPv6, router, EIGRP 99. Oh, shut down. Interface. We've got a triple zero on this one? I think we do. So it looks like on Hospital 2 we've got several more interfaces. We have the S000, S001, S010, and then the sub interfaces for the gigabit Ethernet. 10, 15, and 20. So we gotta go we gotta get all of those. Here we go. IPv6, yeah, GRP99. N interface, there we go. Okay, Panky. I think we got them all. Let's test it out now. It says your EIGRP for IPv6 configuration can only be checked for this assessment indirectly. After you have completed your configuration in order to get credit for EIGRP for IPv6, you must do the following. On host clink2, go to the desktop tab and open the command prompt. There we go, clink2. Command prompt. So if we did everything correctly, we should be able to tell that. Telnet two. You know what we do? We're gonna do this. Copy, paste. Oh, okay. Here we go. Looks like we're we were able to tunnel through. Now the password it says has to be admin. No, no, that's not right. Cisco. Cisco. There. Aha. Admin. Okay, we are in, guys. Go to configuration terminal and then interface G00 because it says that we want to turn it on. So let's say no shutdown. Yeah, no shutdown. Okay, we're good. Now let's get out of here before somebody sees us. So we're terminated. We are out of there. Good job, guys. Proud of you. In your score report, blah, 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 blah. Okay, customize ERGRP for IPv4 operation. Customize EIGRP for IPv4 as follows. Set the interface bandwidth for the two EIGRP interfaces on router data center to match the interface clock speed. Set the interface bandwidth for the serial interfaces on router hospital 1 and hospital 2 to match the bandwidth of the interfaces on the uh, data center right here. So we're going to change the bandwidth. Whoa, we're going to change the bandwidth on those two and we have to match it on this one and this one. Now I've done this packet tracer a few different times just to make sure I was competent to do this video and I found that there is something of an inconsistency in this bandwidth configuration. Let me show you what I mean. Do show run. It says that we have to set the bandwidth for to match the interface clock speed. So right here you see that the interface serial 00, and that's what that is, serial 00, the clock rate is 2 million. Now if you take 2 million bits and you divide it by kilobyte, uh, kilobits, which we're going to set our default, we're going to set our bandwidth on our interfaces at, comes up with 2000, okay? Nah. 
2000 right there. Over on S001, which is right there, you see it has a clock rate of 128,000 zero cents. And if we divide that by a thousand, which would be, you know, one kilobit, it comes up with 128. Now, it doesn't work that way. We have to make both of the interfaces bandwidths to uh, be 2,000, and I'll, we'll just do that now. Okay, so to get this packet tracer to score correctly, I don't know why. Maybe I'm missing something. If you guys know more about it than I do, please comment below because I'm scratching my head on this one. Exit interface S000 bandwidth, and we're just going to do that 2000. Enter. So it's going to go down and then come back up. All right, now let's just do the up arrow, change it to a 1 because we're going to edit the next interface over here. Double up arrow, same, uh, set that one to a thou, uh, 2000 as well. Now I tried to set it to the 128, didn't work. It only works. It only scored right when it was 2000. Now, I think this is a mistake. If it's not, let me know why, because I'm very curious. I did some searching, can't figure it out. Exit. All right. We'll go to Hospital One now, and we're going to go to that same interface, S000. Oops. All right. Bandwidth 2000. One, two, three. Yep. Okay, that one's done. Let's go over to the hospital too and do the same thing, except it's going to be on the interface S001. Bandwidth 2000. Enter. Now the packet tracer should score right, and believe me, I am a little nervous about it. Because maybe this is the one time it actually scores like it's supposed to, and I get it wrong. Oh well. Next, we are going to customize. E I G R P. Oh, hold on, hold on here. I didn't do everything I was supposed to. Configure all LAN interfaces, both physical and virtual, so that E I G R P messages are not sent to LANs. So that means that one and that one need to be shut down. Configure data center so the static. Oh, we, okay, so that's that uh, default route. was redistribute default or redistribute static, what, I, what we did earlier, so we don't have to do that. But this we do have to do. Okay, let's go to Hospital One first. Let's get out of there. And router. Router EIGRP99. Passive interface is G00. That's the one on the LAN, if I'm not mistaken. G00. Yes, it is. Passive interface. We're done. Let's exit out of there and do. Then we have to do it also for uh, IPv6. So IPv6 router EIGRP 99 passive interface is G00. Okay, exit out of there. Let's go over to Hospital Two. Passive interfaces. Now these ones are going to be those virtual interfaces that he was talking about. That's going to be the you know those 10, 15, and 20 sub interfaces. Passive interface G010. Oh, and there's one other one. I will leave it alone. It could be the passive interface G0099, which is on this router. Do show run. You can see it here, right here. So I mean, we could just just for consistency's sake, let's do it, okay? Just to make me feel a little better. We probably don't need to. I don't think it scores it, but we'll do it for for that. Okay. Now let's exit out of here, and we'll do it for IPv6 as well. IPv6 route. Yeah, GRP 99. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, here we go. Passive interface. There. Right? No. Where is it? 
There it is. Okay, I think we're done here. Just checking my notes, so bear with me. Okay, we're good. Let's go down here and see what else this crazy packet tracer wants us to do. Configure hot standby routing protocol. Configure hospital 1 and clinic 10 routers with hot standby from HSRP. In this scenario, the hosts on the medical network are to be dual homed. In other words, if the active hospital router fails, the medical network hosts will use the clinic router, this poor guy over here, as their gateway. Although connectivity to the rest of the network, blah, 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 blah. You will configure hospital 1 as the active router and clinic 10 as the backup using HSOP. All right, so we have to open up hospital 1. And we are going to edit the IS information on the interface that connects to the LAN. And that's the G00 interface. So interface G00. Standby is the command we use for hot standby. And we're going to use the group number of 1. And then the IP address, this is a virtual IP address of 10.1.0.1. Enter. The router should immediately become the active router. So we are going to say standby one preempt. Preempt. Yeah. And the priority should be 150. Standby group number one priority is 150. Let's do standby version 2 while we're at it. And you can see some debugging information come up here. So it's going into the initialization and it's going to go into the active state here pretty quick. And you can just watch that happen. Let's see, clinic. I think we got all those ready. Now let's move over to our clinic one. I'm just keeping this up to make sure it goes into the active state. Interface G00, same as the other, if I remember correctly. Yep, there it went, active. So this is the G00. Standby, it says that we want to give it the virtual IP address, and we're going to be using the group number, same thing. But we want to leave all the other uh, the values as the default. So basically, we're just doing that standby one IP 10.1.0. Whoa, that one. And I think that's it. Let's do the version, whoa, standby, standby version 2. And this one will transition into the standby state if everything goes properly. Mm -hmm. Now it says, in order for the clinic to requires the default route to be configured, we already did this, so I don't really know why it's telling us to do this. This router is not configured with EIGRP. Okay, so what? The clinic 1 and H1-1, those two computers here, need to have the proper default router. And now we're going to use that virtualized IP address right there. So that one's there. And this one is right here. Done. So that one's good. Goats keep on rolling. Part two. Yeah, part one was pretty tough, huh? So transitioning into part two. Configure link aggregation with Ether Channel. Configure the three Ether Channel links between switches Net1, FL1, and FL2. Bump, bump, and bump. Configure Ether Channel with LACP protocol using the information in the table. Both sides of the channel should ask if the other side is willing to participate in the channel. So it's going to be that active. It's the active command. All right, let's go to net one first. In 
interface range and let's see here so net one has to have these two interfaces in the channel number one interface range f03-4 okay so to group those into a channel we have to say channel group and we're going to give it one and then we have to give it the mode let me do a question mark so lacp uses the active command or the on command now both lacp and pagd both use the on or we can use the passive. Passive waits to be initialized, but it says we want all interfaces asking each other to become, uh, to make those connections over LACP. So we have to make it sure it's active. Let's do an active, active, enter. So this is going to go down and back up. Next, we want to do channel two on net one. So that's ports five and six. So let's just do our up arrows, change that to a 5 and a 6, enter, and everything else should remain the same except that 1 needs to get changed to a 2, enter. So that one's done there. Let's do FL1 now. Yes, FL1. Interface range F zero. Let look here. We're gonna do three and four again. Three through four. Whoa. Three through four. Yeah. Chan channel group. This is channel group one. This is gonna be on that one. Mode active. Let's do our double up arrow and our next instance of FL1 is going to be in channel 3. So right there and then ports 1 and 2. So I'll just change that to a 3. Is that right? Yep, that's right. 3. So that's done. Let's go over here to FL2. Let's see, we're using 2 and 3 for FL2. The first one we'll do is the 5 and 6. Channel group 2, here's the 5 and 6. Mode active. And then lastly, we're going to do FL2 is on ports number 1 through 2. And that's going to be on group three. Enter. Okay. So that's done. Going to configure your trunking now. The trunk between hospital two, that's the router, and net one should be active. So that's down right now. Let's see why. Show run. Let's see, that is the G00 interface, if I'm not mistaken. Where the heck is that? Okay, so it looks like it doesn't have the no shutdown command, so that's on on our on the router side. It's up. Must be the net side. Let's check it out. Where are we at? Where are we at? Here it is. Gigabit Ethernet 01. Sure enough, it is down. It's e Yep, zero one. She's down, boys. So let's turn it back on. Configuration interface G01, no shutdown. And it's up. Cool. So it's active. Big deal. Here we go. The trunk between H2 and at one should use the native VLAN value pre-configured on hospital two. So what the heck is the native VLAN value? Okay, so it's right here actually in our sub interfaces. You see here that it's the G00 interface. We have the 10, that is great. We can see here the encapsulation, can't talk. The encapsulation mode is on the D dot or the dot 1Q10. Here we got a 15, a 20, 
Now right here you see it's a 99 and what is the very next word? Native. So it looks like our native trunk is 99. So let's go back to net one and configure those switch port mode trunk switch port trunk native VLAN 99. How nice is that? Configure all the port channel interfaces as static trunks with the appropriate native VLAN and then disable DTP negotiation on all trunks. So dynamic, uh, dynamic trunking protocol has to be turned off. We don't want anybody talking about that kind of stuff around here. So to do that, we say switch ports, non-negotiate, enter. So we'll do it on our gigabit ethernet 01 and then all of those lines that connect all of these, we are going to do it there as well. Oh yeah, let's just do it this way. Instead of doing it backwards way like that, what we can say is interface port channel access. Interface port channel, and we'll do channel one on this guy. Channel one. Switch port mode trunk. Switch port trunk native VLAN 99 switch port non-negotiate so one two three four let's change that to a two since we're on net two right now so port channel two net two or net one one two three four one two three four one two three four non-negotiate we do not want negotiations around here all right, let's go to FL1 now. Interface, port channel, two, no, one. Enter, switch port, mode, trunk. Switch port, trunk, native, VLAN, 99. Switch port, switch port non-negotiate. One, two, three. We do now the last the next one is on FL1. Oh, channel three. Okay, so channel three. One, two, three, four. Trunk. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Non-negotiate. So that should keep it there. Let's do floor two now. Interface port channel, and we'll do channels two and three since those are the two channels we configured. Two, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk native VLAN 99, switch ports non negotiate. That can even go through. Switch port non negotiate. Yeah, there we go. All right. So we can disable all of that junk. Configure VTP. Oh, great. All right, so net one. Exit. VTP info is what we got to do, and we're going to change the net one to become the server for, excuse me, for the VLAN trunking protocol. VTP mode server, enter. VTP looks like we want our domain to be HOSP SWE. Sounds like a deadly disease. Okay, let's do VTP password for the network authentic authentication. Copy paste. Copy paste. Enter. 
In order for the VLANs to be distributed from the VTP server to the client switches, you may need to take action to increment the VTP revision number. This can be done by adding and deleting a VLAN on the VTP server after the switches in the domain have completed VTP configurations and trunking is operationally uh, operating correctly. Now there is a problem with the packet tracer. It doesn't really tell you to do this, so I'm going to show you a shortcut here shortly. But let's get the rest of these things all figured out. Let's do floor one now. VTP mode, and that's going to be a client. VTP domain. Ah, let's do the password so I don't have to do a different copy paste. Password, yeah, I'm lazy. Okay, so, oops, domain, there we go. Now, let's go over to floor two, it's going to be our last one, v access, VTP, mode, clients, VTP, domain, paste, VTP, pass, Word. Okay. Do show VLAN brief. Right now we have a few VLANs. We've got one, ninety-nine, and ninety-nine-nine, and then the rest of the default ones. So it doesn't have the ones that it needs for its computers down here. Because if you see show run, do show run, you'll notice that a lot of these are on VLAN 10. And that's it doesn't know about them. You have to configure them on the Net1 server for the VTP server. Uh, do show VLAN brief. Now he doesn't know anything about those VLANs either. He only has 99 and 99. So the rest of these, all the rest of these switches need to know about VLANs 10, 15, and 20, but he doesn't even know about it. So they don't tell you to configure the VLANs on here, and I think that's just a travesty. So let's do that. VLAN. VLAN 15, name, thing 2, VLAN 20, name, stuff, and things. Can't use spaces. Oh well. Exit. Do show VLAN brief. So now we've got these three VLANs in here. And these ones over here are collecting that information. So right here we have do show VLAN brief. And now we've got those on there. See? Those interfaces have been assigned. Isn't that cool? And over here as well. See those interfaces go back up. Uh, they've been turned on. Now I've had trouble with this switch. Sometimes they go on and off and on and off. I'm not sure exactly what's happening there. But if those turn back to brown, don't worry. They're not dying. Or maybe they are. Do show VLAN brief. And again, see these ones have been configured. So they're there. Cool. Next. Step 2-4. Configure rapid PBST on Net1, FL1, and FL2. All switches should use rapid spanning tree protocol. Net1 should be configured as the root bridge. Okay, let's go over to Net1, Mr. Root Bridge. Spanning tree, ra uh, mode, rapid PBST, enter. Spanning tree, let's see, it says it has... A root bridge for VLANs 10, 15, da, da, da. VLAN 10, comma, 15, comma, 20, root primary. 
Get rid of the root bridge with a priority value. Did we do priorities? No. Okay. Let's do an up arrow. So we've entered that one. Priority. And let's give it this priority right here. Two, four, five, seven, six. Enter. FL2 should be configured with uh, configured as the secondary root bridge with a different priority value. Let's go over here. Floor one. Spanning tree mode. Rapid PVST. Enter. Spanning tree. VLAN. VLAN 10. 15. 20. Root secondary. So that's a backup. Let's do an up arrow. We'll just back that off there. Priority. And that is 28672. Enter. All right, let's get out of this one. And then over to FL. See, look, those links went down. I don't know what's going on there. I think something funky is going on with the packet tracer. Again, I'm really curious. If you guys know, let me know. All right, spanning tree. Mode. Rapid PDST. Enter. Spanning tree. I think the rest of that's that. It says here that the next step here is to configure only switch FL1 as follows. Configure all of the access ports that are assigned to the VLANs with the BPDU guard. Well, which ones are the access ports? Do show run. Looks like we've got, so those are all trunks. These ones are shut down. Looks like it starts at interface 10. That's an access, and it keeps on going all the way down to 24 as an access. Okay, so let's do that. Interface range F010 through 24. We're going to configure spanning tree on these guys. Spanning tree, uh, BPDU guard, enable, enter. And let's do the same thing, except we're going to say port fast. Okay, and that'll give you an, a little thing here that says, okay, you got to watch what you're doing, and if you configured it, it's not going to work if it's on a trunk, but it will do it if it's on a regular port, that's an access port, but we already knew all that, so we're fine. All right, guys, here's the nerve-wracking time. I can't see whether my score is correct yet or not, so we're going to turn this thing in and see if it works. Submit assignment. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Yeah, we did it. We did it. You did it. You guys did it. Thank you so much for watching. We got this 100% together. And I want to tell you that I've got something special for you down in the description below. You'll see all of the commands that we use today to configure each one of our switches and routers to get this 100% score. If you have any questions, though, please do not hesitate to put them in the comment section below. We'll get those answered for you as quickly as I can. You guys are awesome. Thank you again for watching. As always, peace.